Hi, it's Peace and Harmony with you here today, checking in to focus in on how to really rise above the cognitive dissonance and essentially the feeling of really addiction to a violator, a perpetrator, a narcissistic or psychopathic abusive individual. One thing I find uh, most pressing, uh, most poignant and really really one of further attention is that of the feeling of being more or less addicted to this abuser. And the people who fall prey, uh, the people who are enmeshed with them, really exhibit this quite profoundly. And really the definition of an addiction is a feeling of powerlessness. Or as Dr. Joe Dispenza describes as, you feel like you can't stop. And on uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, the author of uh, the wonderful and prolific book, Think and Grow Rich. He describes in his study of those people who are uh, the most successful entrepreneurs, business owners, C-level executives in the United States at the time. Um, he described, you know, really his own um, experience with addiction and, you know, things like alcohol and, you know, things in moderation, yes, but when he described it as when the drink is drinking you, then you know you're addicted. So as you can see, and based on our discussion, if the locus of control is outside of you and you are powerless over it, then in essence, the drink is drinking you. The person is controlling you. The locus of control is outside of you and you are rendered powerless. You are essentially addicted. And this does have a physiological basis, particularly uh, in the foundation, created in the foundation of the love bombing phase when they overwhelm you, intoxicate you with a chemical cocktail of oxytocin, serotonin, all the different uh, heightened uh, chemicals that arise out of the babying, uh, the dissociation, the depersonalization that comes with breaking down really your identity, uh, breaking down really your own value system, getting you exhausted, getting you uh, tired, the incessant um, texting, the incessant uh, admiration and attention that you have to give them even when you should be attending on matters of your own personal regard. They do this as a, a methodology to implant really a new sort of hardware or a control manipulation mechanism in you. It's very similar to that of a computer in an operating system. So, and if you've ever experienced a virus in your computer, it's very much the same thing the brainwashing gaslighting, the making you feel like things are kind of out of reality, the flipping around of emotions um, and natural emotional um, connection you have with events, experiences, and items around you, that significance. They're able to contort uh, the meaning that is attached to these things. So you no longer feel kind of grounded in reality. You feel like you're not um, really... Um, control of your own uh, feelings, perceptions. Um, you experience a feeling of dissociation. A lot of people experience this perhaps in the beginning as euphoria, and then it transforms into terror, um, and then it transforms into rage, out of control behavior, uh, dis you know, uh, discrepancies in um, what you want, that cognitive dissonance, altercations with the law. So it really be can become overpowering, overwhelming, it really caused you to bring out the worst in you that you did not even know was existing. And that's because they have uh, essentially um, overwhelmed you and created an, an addiction. So how do you overcome this? How do you really separate yourself from this? One, realize through awareness what it is. So if you are overwhelmed by this person addicted, realize that you have um, they have caused you to become overwhelmed and addicted to them. And that was the main goal. That was their pre-calculated uh, uh, intention was to break you down. Sad but true, sick but true. These people do not operate on a sort of genuine functional basis. They look to uh, essentially break you down and feel a sense of um, excitement when they're over able to overpower you and control you. They get a rise out of it. They get juice from it. They get excited from it. They get amorous over knowing that they have control over you and that they have caused suffering, um, discomfort, uh, 
and uh, really, they see you going through the withdrawal as well because this is not the first time that they have overwhelmed and overpowered somebody. It's a very uh, uh, horrible experience to go through. And um, if you have indeed gone through this and you need some individual one-on-one -on -one, um, consulting, please do feel free to contact me at peaceandharmonynow at gmail.com as I can most certainly help you through this and understand the dynamics of what's going on. Um, I'm certainly happy to do that. So please do feel free to contact me. Um, and so when you're you know, realizing this, that they have an overpowering, it's because they've broken you down. They've regressed you to the point where um, they've been able to infiltrate your, your value system, your identity, and your perceptions. And it, it is um, a horrible thing. Um, why would uh, somebody want to cause such suffering? It's because this is what essentially causes them to feel active or connected. It, it gives them a sense of power. That is what is um, exciting to them. That is what they live for. That is what they get um, their, their delight out of. That is what they get their pleasure out of. So just as you might have pleasure from a good meal and like natural you know, production of your day, um, they get pleasure out of hurting people. So it's very sadistic. Um, yes, and you know, you have to realize that there are people in this world who see relationships differently than um, as pleasure-based or love-based, that they actually have a pathology in this. So, um, you know, and, and then realizing that, um, you know, how do you overcome this sort of addiction? The awareness that it's an addiction, realize that that is the festering and that out-of-control feeling, that it's based on a physiological um uh, you know, neurochemical and neuropeptide release that's going on within the body that's causing these adverse reactions, feeling you, uh, keeping you in that state of fight or flight, keeping you um, kind of rage-based, toxic-based, negatively reacting to them. Um, and so you don't want to exist in that state. It's going to eventually cause um, adrenal fatigue. It's going to cause depression. It's going to cause um, complete distress and really, you know, a, a lethargy and um, a really sort of depletion and robbing of your energy it can be very crippling. So even though you do have to go through the detox, the withdrawal, you know, and you're, you know, uh, really, it's almost like um, it really formats really the grief stages where you want to deny it, um, you know, and then you, you know, you don't want to deny that this, you want to deny that this person has had this um, experience over you. Um, and, and not accept it, not believe it, then you get into really sort of the uh, feelings of loneliness and isolation and really trying to come to terms with it. Then you go into the bargaining stage where, you know, you kind of think, what would I have done if I could have done this better? You begin to question yourself and, and really trying to wish that, um, you know, if I, if I could just, you know, relate with them on a different level. That's really the bargaining stage, but all these are really trying to process you through to you know, the understanding of, um, you know, getting to that ultimate stage of acceptance. But then you, you know, people usually tend to go through a depression. Again, a very sort of alone uh, situation where one is um, coming to terms with it themselves and getting up that, you know, empowerment stage and then finally working through to acceptance. They unequivocally, without a doubt, have come to accept that this person is pathological this person is not a good influence. This person is lethal. This person is not um, not uh, looking out for their best interests. In fact, that they accept that this person only has their devastation, suffering, uh, suffering and uh, destruction in mind, and that they understand the gravity of this person's malintent, and then they accept that it's absolutely unequivocally 100% right for them to separate, go con no contact, and move beyond them and separate your energy. So um, I hope this video does help and describe really um, some of the experiences, dynamics, and resolution moving forward. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.